Now, folks from Kelso, welcome to Splits Bowling for the title matches of today's JBT tournaments. Both of uh, divisions at once here. This is Cameron Weir looking for revenge here. He lost yesterday's title match. And he throws balls like that. He ain't going to lose today's title match, but he's got a tough opponent in Tyler Cruz going at it over here. In the handicap division, Bree Hemming looking to capture a long awaited first career title. And she'll get it if she can do stuff like that. That's a double for her. She opened in the first and doubled. But she is going up against one of the up-and-coming stars of our tour. This is Cortez Schenk from Arizona. If you watch our other videos, you know him well. He's won twice since January. And uh, has a really good physical game for a little guy. Here's Cruz, who we all know very well up here in the Northwest. He's doubles up to take an early lead. That was a first and second frame double for him. So most of the bowlers that have a little bit of hand rotation playing that deep inside line now. We bowled on a new pattern for us, Kegel's Sunset Strip pattern. Whoops, we're going to have to add the six there. Thanks, Steve. See you. All right, see you later. Good to see you. Good job. Right on. Cool. And we'll see you in late June now, too, guaranteed. That's right. Machina swept the six away, so Tez has to get that respot. Meanwhile, we'll see if Tyler can get out to a 19 pin lead if he can open up with three in a row. The sunset strip, the strip implies that there was uh, strips of oil out on the lanes. There were sort of blocks of every five boards. Wow! <laughs> Flat within those five boards. And something you will rarely see a power player like Tyler leave, a 5'10 in the pocket. He came out of that ball sort of funny and it just skated in that middle strip of oil that goes almost all the way down the lane. And yeah, that's an ugly result for him right there. My goodness. Cortez is giving a lot of pins. He's got to win by 43 pins to win this game. Yeah, this is... Well, Tyler certainly capable of making this. He's going to have to get the ball to the left of the 5 and drive the 5 over into the 10. If not, Cameron will grab the lead on the bench. Attacking this from the far right to grab extra vi uh, friction on those shorter Ooh, that's sort of a backup. Look at this. Wow. I wasn't expecting the backup <laughs> right there. But nice try. Didn't miss it by much. And the lead flip-flops over to Weir. Cameron, an eight-time JBT champ, while Cruz, I think, has six. Somewhere near, near that number, at least. Two of the best we got up here in the Northwest. And nicely done spare for Shake. Courtesy of Cortez's dad, Cortez has done a truckload of traveling this year. He's already won tournaments out in New Mexico and Arizona. Looking to win his third of the season, the third of the calendar year up here in Washington. My goodness. By the way, yes. Beautiful shot there from Shank. Here's Cameron's shot. Equally beautiful in his third frame. Double up to extend his lead. Bree has been oh so close to winning titles in the past, has a couple of second place finishes, a couple heartbreaking second place finishes also. Uh, the very dedicated Hemming family, we'd love to see her break through with the win here. Getting lots of pins and throwing the ball pretty good today. Obviously, she's still bowling here. And that early double is a huge boost when you're already getting 40. See if she can convert this double wood. <coughs> Meanwhile, the deliberate weir. Many of our Pack Northwest firsts, like we talked about on other webcasts, he was the first to get to many of the levels up here in this somewhat isolated conference of JBT. High backswing and effortless follow through. Definitely the best part about his game. Pretty good shot, just a pinch high, breaks up the 4 9, leaves only the 9. Here's Bree's attempt at the double wood. Look out! Tougher for a low average bowler like Bree to cover up that spare. She came in at a 138 average today, qualified for the survivor portion at minus 50, indicative of how low the scores were today in this challenging sunset strip pattern. And then just kept on surviving, that's the name of the game. If you're new to our tour in survivor format, there's equal number of bowlers on each pair. All you have to do is not be the lowest on your pair and you move on. Eventually. 18 handicapped survivors are whittled down to these final two. 24 made the cut and scratch. Big turnout again today. And again, kept on surviving down to the top two. No problem at all for Weir on the nine pin. Let's see if Cruz can recover from that ugly split here. 
trails now by 15 pins. Shooting in the fourth, coming on camera. There you go, gets that 10 out. Meanwhile, I mean, not as good frame for Bree, but the semi good news about it was that she's on an open, so she didn't lose any count off that short first ball. And we'll see what Tez can do working on that strike. Reminds me of a young Pete Weber, physically. That is high praise. Oh, what a break for him there. To cut that ball a little short, gets the Brooklyn and a big old smile there. A big lucky break for him. So Tyler, Tyler can rev it up with anybody. You see he's attacking the lanes very straight today. That's an interesting and good way to attack these striped patterns. So you kind of want to stay in the same zone. Doing a really funky little wrist position to try and get that ball to go really, really end over end down the lane. Looks like he's forcing it a little bit, to be honest. Again, the strips are in five board increments. So there's five boards that are flat of one length. And then as you move further outside towards the edge, five more board increments, shorter and shorter. So if you move more than a fifth board, if you're following what I'm saying, you're gonna get a totally different lane condition in effect. Tyler's trying to stay within that stripe. Ow, oh, Tez tickles him up there on the light hit to get carry for three in a row. Six pin shouldn't be any trouble, but you never know. Does that little backup thing? And has it easily. See if Bree can recover from back to back opens. She's either struck or open so far. That's got a chance. Hopefully, that string will end with a spare here then. Yesterday's cuts were roughly even in both divisions, while today way, way, way lower. Minus 94 in the scratch division, so that's just above a 180 average to get into round two, where our handicap was minus 62. Pretty low for handicap, so lane conditions dictate the scoring pace yet again. And, uh-oh, she's going to miss that nine pin. Well, let's say, uh, all right, yeah, good to see you guys. Congrats. Travel safe. See you soon. We are meanwhile, that's a bowling ball in the right lane. Oh, wiggle seven pin, look at that. Boy, oh boy, that seven pin did everything but fall for him. Let's see if Bree can get it turned around here in the seventh frame. All right, she'll take a nine count, another potential spare there for her. Look at that seven pin there, halfway off the deck. It's <laughs> still oscillating down there at the end of the lane. But camera, ooh, look out. Boy, that's almost a good thing that it just get over to the left there. There's a spare for Hemming. Hey, if you want to find out who wins, watch part two on YouTube.